Hello everyone, this video will be targeted towards all of the new players to BF4 that may have bought the game because they saw it during a Steam sale or they just discovered the game now in 2021. In this video, I'm going to break down all of the kits or classes in this video, how you should play them to most benefit your team, and because there are a lot of guns in the game, recommend a few for each kit so that you are the most effective soldier you can be. Right, so let's begin with the assault kit, or what should technically be called the medic kit. Like I said, this role should have been called medic. This is what they do best. They can give meds to friendly players as well as revive them. The first thing you'll have in your inventory is the grenade launcher and a med kit. But trust me, you want to switch the grenade launcher for the defibrillator as soon as possible. I'm not sure if people actually read the description of the gadgets, but you can hold down the mouse button to charge the defib and give the player you're trying to revive more HP. Hold down until you hear a beep. Okay. This class is best on infantry maps like Operation Locker, Operation Metro, and Pro Market, but can be played technically on all maps. But on vehicle maps like Caspian Border and Silk Road, you may struggle against all of the vehicles you will have to fight. There are only two field upgrades that medics should concern themselves with, Offensive and Combat Medic. Offensive is good because at level 1 you can sprint faster, at level 2 you'll have increased ammo capacity, and at level 3 you get an extra grenade. This is good for all classes, but I would say the best on Assault. The Field Medic upgrade also gives you Sprint at level 2, but the best perk is the Defib perk. It lets you charge the Defibs almost instantly, so you waste no time getting your teammates on their feet. Best Assault Guns These guns are hands down the best for new players. There will be 4 guns that I recommend for each kit, but you'll find out through playing what you like the most. The M416 this must be mentioned first for its consistency. Best at close and mid ranges, this weapon cannot be ignored. It'll be the second assault rifle that you unlock after the SCAR H. It has a very fast tactical reload time of 1.8 seconds compared to the AK-12's 2.3. This weapon is best used with a one times optic and a stubby grip. Its 750 RPM will give you an advantage on a lot of guns in the game. However, you may be outgunned by the AEK just through sheer lack of DPS. Speaking of AEK, this gun is the most notorious in all of BF4. Whether you're like me and hate it because of how popular it is, you can't deny its usefulness. The fire rate on the AEK is 900 RPM, which means it's one of the highest damaging guns in the game. Also due to competitive rules that ban the Ace-52 and the SCAR-H, as well as the DLC guns, this also means it's pretty much the only gun that pro players will use. You're going to be killed by this gun a lot, but that's just because it's so damn good. It has a reload time of 2.3 seconds, which means you'll have to time your reloads decently, or be caught with an empty magazine. Sadly, I can't really say much more about this gun when you'll try it it'll speak for itself. Most people run this gun with a compensator or muzzle brake as long as a stubby grip. The AUG A3. One of the most underrated guns, I think. Another versatile option. The AUG has only 700 RPM, but this gun can still be managed in close quarters. However, this gun is definitely meant for running and gunning. The bullpup configuration isn't just for show. It actually gives stat boosts for aiming and shooting while moving, with a small penalty to stationary shooting. It also has a muzzle velocity of 670 meters per second, which means that your bullets will meet targets faster than any other assault rifle in the game. Best used with a stubby grip and an optic of your choosing. The Scar Age. I saved this gun for last, despite it being the first one you unlock, because while it is really good, it can be unwieldy to the uninitiated. Its high recoil and low muzzle velocity quickly kills its potential at long range. The muzzle velocity is only 500 meters a second, which is the average velocity of carbines, which definitely puts this gun as a close quarters weapon. With a 1.9 second tactical reload, it's a lot faster than other guns, which is good too. It means you can keep pumping out high damaging 7.62 rounds, and even gives the AEK a run for its money as the best CQB assault rifle. I recommend using a stubby grip. Alright, on to the engineer. A class that was made for and is useless without. Vehicles. The engineer kit has access to a wide collection of rocket launchers, mines, and other gadgets to deal with enemy vehicles and support its team with repairing friendly ones. The engineer is best on maps with tons of vehicles like Dragon Valley, Operation Firestorm, and Siege of Shanghai. There are two playstyles regarding engineers, whether you want to do more healing to your friendly vehicles or harm to your enemy ones, and 
those both have field upgrades to make your job easier. Engineers have exclusive access to PDWs, which is a fancy way of saying SMG. At the ranges you may play at, however, you may find most PDWs to be not useful on all-out vehicle combat, but they make do the NG useful on infantry maps like Locker and Metro. The Engineer's first perk, the Mechanic, allows you to repair and damage vehicles 35% faster with the Repair Tool. The other perks give things like Explosive Resistance and Suppression Resistance, but the first perk is the only one that you should care about. This works best when you play as an NG in a vehicle, when it's safe, you aim your turret away from harm and exit that way and begin repairing. This is also useful for gunners to have, and if you have a friend that are going to be in a tank or a attack chopper together, I recommend that you both have repair tools and the mechanic field upgrade. Now on to the anti-tank perk. Anti-tank, Panzerabwehr, whatever you call it, it's the same thing. Killing those goddamn war machines. This field upgrade's effects are fairly simple, giving you more capacity for mines and rockets, and at the final level, some explosive resistance. Now, the real art to laying mines is making them unexpected. However, there are two different mines that do different things. The M15 AT mine is an average mine that can only be placed on the ground, and it does the most damage to vehicles. The most versatile mine is the M2 Slam, which can be placed in water, and sticks to other surfaces including walls and ceilings. Slams are also smaller, and because they can be placed in three dimensions, that means you can make some truly undetectable traps. Because of the aforementioned lack of use PDWs have, there will only be two on this list, as well as two carbine rifles, which all classes have access to, but are the most useful on engineers with a playstyle like mine. The P90. The AEK of the Engineer, it boasts a 900 RPM rate of fire and 50 rounds in the magazine. However, suffers from worse normal accuracy compared to other PDWs due to its bullpup configuration. However, that means it has stat bonuses like the Alge 3. 50 rounds means that you can now mow down quite a few enemies between reloads and makes this one of the best PDWs in close range. At further ranges though, you're better off using a carbine or a pistol. I recommend either a compensator or a heavy barrel on the P90 to help with either the recoil coil or accuracy respectively. The AS Val. The first DLC gun on this list, this weapon requires the second assault DLC and the co-pilot assignment, which is to be in a helicopter for 10 minutes and have 10 squad repairs. This gun also has 900 RPM, but fires a higher damaging bullet, and it's also integrally suppressed, keeping you off of the mini-map and makes your gunshots quieter. With only a 20 round magazine, you'll be reloading quite more frequently than the P90, but makes up for it in raw DPS. I recommend using it with the stubby grip as well as a laser sight. Now to the carbine rifles the AK-5C. This is the first carbine you'll unlock by playing Engineer, and in my opinion, it's one of the most versatile. With a 700 RPM fire rate and a tactical reload time of 1.9 seconds, it's as average as you can get, but also has one of the most manageable recoils, and may be more suited to the ranges you'd engage infantry in when you're outside of your vehicle. It also has the highest muzzle velocity of all carbines at 610 meters per second, making it the best at range shooting as well. Even after a couple thousand hours, I still use this. I'm my engineer as my main gun. ACWR, one of the most popular carbines even on other kits. This one competes with the AEK as well, and it's the second carbine that you'll unlock. With a RPM of 880, and that's basically 900, right? Well, it has a tactical reload of 1.8 seconds, and this is what I use rather than the AEK, even on Medic. You'll see this gun played on every kit, like I have said, but I would say this is the most common outside of infantry maps on the Engineer. While it doesn't have the range of the AK-5C, it has better firepower at close range, and will also be a gun you'll be killed by a lot. I recommend using a compensator and a stubby grip. The recoil is still more intense than the AEK, but makes up for it in reload speed. Alright, I covered the assault and the engineer. This video took a lot more work than I'm used to, making my highlights, so this will be part one of two. The second part will contain the related info for support and recon, and that'll conclude my beginner guide for BF4. I hope you both enjoyed the video and found it super educational. See you on the battlefield.